After winning the World Series, the Texas Rangers haven't been very loud this offseason. They haven't done anything that major, but they also don't need to, obviously. Is there some room to improve? For any team, there always is. But overall, they of course still have a really good looking roster for this upcoming season. They seem to be in a good position to potentially repeat. And the best part about this team is the core that they have and how locked up they have them for. Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon are going to be the middle infield pair for a long time. And then you have guys like Josh Young and Evan Carter who are new. Young was a rookie in 2023, and Carter played a big impact late in the season and in the postseason, yet didn't even qualify as a rookie, so he's still got six years left of team control. Nathaniel Lowe is a solid first baseman who isn't set to hit free agency until after the 2026 season. The hitting core is pretty set, but the Rangers for some reason are playing it kind of cheap with the worst possible person to be cheap with. So welcome back to the channel, or welcome if it's your first time. About 78% of my watch time is from people who aren't subscribed, so if you enjoy the video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing as it helps reach more people across YouTube and everywhere. I'll appreciate it as much as Rangers fans appreciated Adolis Garcia in 2023. He was of course incredible, and I'm sure even baseball fans as a whole appreciated him. Really other than Astros and D-backs fans, everyone seemed to love Adolis. Even Rays and Orioles fans at one point, he had to just respect what he was doing, especially when those fans realized it just wasn't their year anyway. He was awesome, yet for some reason the Rangers aren't paying him more. Garcia just hit his first year of arbitration eligibility. For those who aren't completely sure what that is, it's when a player can negotiate exactly how much money he'll make for the upcoming season. Either way, Garcia is going to be a Ranger and will continue to be unless he's traded or reaches free agency in 2027. All arbitration is, is a player negotiating salary for each individual season. You're eligible to do this after playing three seasons. And so with Adolis playing three full seasons from 2021 through 2023, he can now negotiate a bigger salary than the league minimum, which is about $775,000. Most players and teams come up with an agreement on the salary that the player will be paid, but sometimes the two sides disagree and they go to an arbitration hearing. That is never a good thing because things actually get kind of cruel and there are multiple players players who have come out publicly after an arbitration hearing and admitted that they felt insulted and think the relationship with their team had been strained as a result of the hearing. Brewers ace pitcher Corbin Burns went to an arbitration hearing with the team last year over a $740,000 difference. He was asking for $10.75 million, they wanted to pay him $10.1 million. It's kind of silly overall to be arguing about all that, but whatever. So they go to the meeting, the Brewers win the case, so Burns gets 10.1 and he was not happy, specifically with how how the hearing went, literally saying that his relationship with the team is hurt because of it, also saying that he believed there were other ways that they could have gone about it and probably been a little more respectful with the way they went about it. Another pitcher, Marcus Stroman, is no stranger to complaining about other people, and he was not shy about an arbitration hearing he had with the Blue Jays years back, tweeting out, the negative things that were said against me by my own team will never leave my mind, before he deleted that tweet. When you have someone like Burns, who's not a big drama queen at all, saying what he said, it shows Stroman isn't alone on this day. The Yankees almost screwed things up with Aaron Judge, Lee their first contract offer to him before the 2022 season and taking their arbitration battle with him into the season. None of it matters now, obviously, but it's just so silly. The whole concept of an arbitration hearing is uncomfortable to think about. I mean, you have a player arguing with his own team over money, but the team having to present why they think their player deserves less money. That's not a very fun thing to be a part of, I'm sure. And unfortunately, this is the route the Rangers might be going with Adolis Garcia. Both parties did not come to a contract agreement before the January 11th deadline, but the difference between them is much more than the Brewers and Burns had, for example. Garcia is requesting $6.9 million, while the Rangers are offering $5 million. An almost $2 million gap, which is the largest gap between any player and team league-wide, and he's the only Rangers player who didn't come to an agreement. In a recent event at Globe Life Field in a dinner, Garcia, who was all dressed up in style, was asked about the arbitration situation, and he's handling it well, he didn't crap talk anyone, he just said that they're waiting for the hearing, and he is a little disappointed, but it is what it is, and he's there for the team. The Rangers apparently haven't gone to an arbitration meeting with a player since 2000. It's been 24 years. To have Adolis Garcia be the first one since then sounds insane. The Rangers just won the World Series for the first time in history. Garcia was at the forefront of that success. I mean, the dude became a postseason hero. He was awesome. 
The two sides can obviously just meet in the middle and agree on about $6 million, or the Rangers can just decide to pay him what he wants, which I think they should just do. Look, I get it. At the end of the day, it's a business and the Rangers are trying to operate a certain specific way. I doubt it's personal at all, but come on. We know this isn't a cheap organization by any means. They had a top five payroll in 2023 and their middle infield alone costs half a billion dollars overall. They're not afraid to spend money, so just give Adolis what he's asking for. Now, if Garcia hadn't had the year he had in 2023, and was asking for this amount of money, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense to not give him that. But 2023 was such a step forward for him in his career, a career that was already pretty good. He was a league average hitter in 2021 and then went a little bit over league average in 2022. He was pretty good in 2022 and then went more above average in 2023. He was really good. He had almost 40 home runs, drove in over 100 RBIs. I mean, the man got MVP votes and was rewarded for his defense too with a gold glove. And then of course his postseason heroics. Without Garcia, the Rangers do not win the World Series last year. He ended Houston basically by himself at certain points. He won ALCS MVP. He had a walk-off in Game 1 of the World Series, swatted eight home runs overall. I mean, the dude was insane. He's very clearly worth at least $6.9 million. At the end of the day, he won you a championship, and that's what it's all about, right? You play to win championships, and Adolis Garcia was a vital part of a World Series winning team. Then add on that his bat has only improved. I just don't really get why the Rangers need to go to a hearing and potentially potentially strain the relationship with the Dolis. It's pretty clear how tense and upsetting things can get with these hearings. So the ideal scenario would be to obviously avoid that at any cost. You shouldn't be going to war with your own player, especially when it's Adolis Garcia we're talking about here. Things don't seem very hostile or bad at all yet, so let's just hope it doesn't get to that point. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon.